Hey, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss the difference between using Fusion 360 and Easel with your X-Carve. And I'm gonna go through my workflow um, that I would normally do, and then uh, a quick Fusion workflow. So before I started using Fusion, I would design my parts in Adobe Illustrator. And you can see here, I'm just designing uh, what I wanna be cutting for my uh, Swiss Army inspired uh, key organizer, which I have a, a full video on this, so I'm just rushing through it really quickly. And before, when I would use Illustrator, I would export uh, my drawing as an SVG file and then import it into Easel. And here I'm just selecting my outlines and adding tabs and making sure my depths are correct. And once we have that done, we just select our material and send it off to the X-Carve to run. Um, so I'm just gonna go through this really, really fast here. Um, this is the default settings for uh, hard maple in easel. Um, part in the end mill, it's a little dull, so it's not cutting super great. Um, so you can see here with the default settings, uh, it took about eight minutes and 20 seconds to cut this part. So I thought I could do a little bit better and go into Fusion 360 to create this part. So now I'm just sketching out um, my, my drawing here, and then I'll be do extruding it later to get my depths. Um, you could also just export your SVG, or I'm sorry, import your SVG into Fusion, uh, and you wouldn't have to do all this, but I'm kind of dialing in the dimensions and getting them more, more accurate than I was doing before in Illustrator. So just adding my holes, uh, the through holes that go all the way through, and then I'm going to be adding the recesses for the head of the bolt and then also the recess for the nut of the bolt. And it's, it's nice to do this in Fusion because you can kind of see it a little bit better. You can go back and change your, your dimensions um, after the fact as well, a lot easier. Uh, so now I'm just finding a center line here so I can get my um, the little indent for where you can pull the key out, getting those precisely uh, positioned uh, equally by doing some dimensioning here. And once we have that done, we can just trim off the excess uh, sketch parts. So now that we have that sketch done, we can extrude it. Um, I'm using a, two, a quarter inch material here, so I'm just extruding it that full depth of the material and extruding the um, holes all the way through. And now I will go back and extrude my um, recesses for the nut and the head of the bolt. And now that we have that done, we're gonna go into cam. And this is where it gets a little trickier. Um, you need to set up your stock, um, which you do in easel as well, but this way you, you, you do this inside of Fusion um, to let uh, the, the machine know what you're going to be cutting. So getting all of my dimensions in properly for the, the work that I'm going to be cutting to hold down on my machine. And now setting my origin point to uh, the corner where I'll be starting the X-Carve to run the process. And now you're going to have to go in and change your, do, uh, and do some tool pathing. So I'm doing a boring operation to clear out the holes, the through holes. And then I'm going to do another circular um, to clean out the recess for the head of the bolt. And then I'm going to do a 2D adaptive um, to clean out the inside here. I selected 2D contour this time. Uh, it didn't work out as well as I wanted to. It missed the inside. So um, it's not pictured, but I actually did change that operation to a uh, 2D adaptive pocket clearing. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail on setting up cam paths and feeds and speeds and all that. Um, that's kind of another video. So you can do a simulation and it'll show you um, what's gonna happen when it runs on your machine. So I'm pretty happy with this and I'm just using the default speed settings and I wanna see what's gonna happen. So here I am running my default settings that it fusion wanted to use for use for plastics and i think it was a little too fast um, it uh, cut it in a minute and a half quicker which is good for production runs 
But you can see here, um, we have some issues with the corners, and um, so I think I was just running it too fast in the machine. Um, couldn't keep up with it and it was just the tool was, was digging in too fast and going off track. So um, back into my tool library in Fusion and I'm going to adjust my feed rate and going to bump it down to 30 inches per minute. I was up at 49 which is pretty aggressive and I'm just going to export that um, G-code again and then you go back into, you can do this in Easel or Universal G-code sender and send that output to your machine. So this one went, ran a lot better. Um, I still, it was about a 45 seconds longer and I was still having issues with the, um, it not following that line properly. It was cutting too early and, and not being accurate. So it turns out that my stepper motors were actually under voltage and the Z axis was losing steps because of that. Uh, you can see in this slow motion video that um, I got it dialed in and working good. So um, yeah, so to adjust that you need to go into uh, open up your motor shield motor controller and hook up a multimeter to your potentiometer on the X um, axis and check that voltage and see what it's coming out to. Um, I found that around 1.6 volts works really well and it's not been losing steps or overheating or anything like that. So unfortunately I didn't actually record um, me f getting the final thing done. I was too busy trying to get this slow motion shot. So um, uh, here is a, a picture of the final one that I ended up uh, carving out of purple hearts. So you can see how well that, that turned out. Um, so yeah, I know this was a really quick video. Um, I hope that gave you some little information between using Easel or using Fusion 360 with your X-Carve. Um, I've been running a Tormach CNC for the last couple months and have been getting very interested in doing my own cam toolpathing uh, on my X-Carve. So it's kind of my first attempt at it and um, I, th I think I've got some good, um, good starting point here and uh, hopefully this video uh, inspires you to try doing that on your X-Carve um, and you can kind of see the things that I faulted at and hopefully you won't do them. So um, really hope this video helped out. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them. And um, if you like this video, please subscribe um, and uh, give it a like. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something and we'll see you guys soon. All right, bye.